So we'll do a uh, cold start video on this uh, 1981 of Porsche 928. So it's um, Sunday morning. It's uh, uh, probably about two or three degrees Celsius and the car has uh, been outside overnight, uh, probably possibly for the first day in its whole life. Um, but I haven't driven it in 24 hours. Okay, so we'll start it up. I'll show you what comes out of the tailpipe. Uh, I've got a GoPro in the uh, in the cabin. Uh, we'll look at the uh, oil pressure, move the camera around to the front of the engine, and uh, you know you can listen for listen to the sound listen to the sound uh, of the engine and uh, warming up. It, uh, it behaves beautifully, but I, I will uh, demonstrate this. idling we have our our oil pressure which is uh, pegged at five uh, it'll fall to two when it's warm we can see that it's charging uh, we can see it's totally cold uh, half a tank of fuel and then if there's any problem with the car that red uh, that exclamation light will light up along with um, that on the dash so those are both out um, if I take my foot off the clutch I don't hear any noise from the release bearing. The handbrake works, the light comes on when that's on. And then look at the engine. That runs very smooth. really nicely like it's like a brand it's like a brand new car so let's let it warm up here for a minute or so and then uh, and then we'll take it for a drive it's um, uh, probably one of the last days I can do this in Calgary before it starts snowing, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, yeah, just a nice, nice drive in the country here. So uh, we'll let it warm up for a few minutes and then we'll take off. And so it's been idling for about two, two minutes or so now, and we're starting to see just a tiny little bit of heat in the engine, and the uh, RPMs have fallen to uh, well, 700 or so, and we're still pegged at uh, five bar. Um, when we get going a little bit, the oil pressure is gonna fall. When it's fully warm, it'll be down to about two bar, and uh, the, uh, the engine temperature totally behaves itself. It's rock steady about halfway through the dial once it, uh, once it warms up. Well, there's a little bit of condensation, obviously when it's uh, a few degrees below and or a few degrees Celsius and you start it. Um, and then that clears up once the, uh, once the exhaust heats up. So uh, just for people who live in warm, warm climates, um, uh, that's normal. Okay, so we're gonna take this 928 out for a drive. It's been warming up for a little while. We've got, uh, it's off the peg. Uh, it's been maybe five minutes or six minutes. We're warming up. Our oil pressure's at uh, four bar. The parking brake is off. And uh, we've got some heat in the engine. So let's go. One of the last days I can drive it. It's, uh, this is in, um, this is in November, mid-November, and uh, in Calgary, it's, uh, it's 
actually fairly rare that actually there's no snow on the ground. So this may be my last chance to drive this car uh, this year. So the clutch take up is nice. Um, there's no juddering or the drivability is excellent. There's no stuttering or stumbling from, uh, from the engine. Uh, actually, I've never driven the car with the gearbox cold uh, before, but uh, uh, you know, it's slightly stiffer than normal as you'd expect, but uh, no trouble with the, syn the synchros. It's probably not going to stay there for very long. All right, the dog leg first takes a little bit of getting used to, um, uh, but becomes second nature um, after a while. The engine has lots of torque. Um, you know, I, actually, with the gearbox, I first few times I was driving it, I was starting it in second gear and it didn't seem to matter. And uh, what I like about the, the 928, or, or this 928, the early ones anyway, is that um, when you're using low throttle openings um, and you're revving under 3000 RPM, it's very quiet and refined. Um, and uh, it's a nice cabin, nice serene place to uh, to be uh, to uh, to pass the time um, when you when you use larger throttle openings and you use more than uh, more than 3,000 rpm the engine sort of wakes up and you get that uh, characteristic uh, v8 verbal and pulling from only about 600 rpm with that um, and uh, like I said there's no drivability issues as well at, at all. Synchros are excellent. Uh, there's no uh, no hesitation getting into the gear. It's slightly long travel, um, you know, slightly notchy gearbox, but th that's 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 the way they are. Um, I'll leave the fan off just so we don't have the blower motor noise, but the uh, the heat works well. So the car is extremely refined on the highway. Um, there's a little bit of wind noise, a little bit of tire noise, maybe a little bit more uh, than my Jag XJS uh, that I just sold because I had a similar year XJS. I also have a similar year uh, Mercedes uh, 450 SLC, and those two cars were compared, you know, the competitors to this car. Um, the Mercedes is way less refined. Uh, you know, it's a you know, it, it feels like a 10 year older car, and, and, and the design is. So, um, you know, in terms of, the, I mean, this car was absolutely state of the art in the late 70s and early 80s, and the SLC was fairly antiquated. Uh, the Jaguar, um, you know, they put a lot of a, a, a lot of time and money and engineering expertise into refinement uh, with really sophisticated uh, mountings for the subframes front and rear subframes and so on so so the xjs is like it's almost like a rolls royce inside it's it's so refined but it, it's nowhere near uh the handling or the sharpness of the steering than the 928 as you'd expect so anyway the I've three of the cars from this same vintage so it's interesting to compare them this must have been you know like a spaceship uh it was when it, when it came out feels like a like it feels like a modern car today and this example feels like a new car I mean there's no rattles uh, there's no no bearing noises from the wheels there's no pulsation from the brake pedal there's no uh, vibration in the steering uh, there's no you know different NVH you know issues that can come with older cars, different harmonics or whatever. It feels like a brand new car. Um, uh, very 
very direct steering, but not but not twitchy. And uh, you know, we're up to you know 100 kilometers an hour, and it feels like you can like get out and walk. It, it really it really is quite extraordinary uh, for the era when you consider you know the you know the similar nine similar vintage 911s uh, or um, or some of the other competitors. Um, and I don't think that, in my opinion, I don't think the car aged particularly well because uh, it got faster, it got, it got, you know, larger displacement, it got more power, and it got, you know, but bigger wheels and tires. And so, you know, I've driven most of the 928 variants uh, you know, the, the GTS seems to be the, you know, the one with the highest values uh, that everybody wants. But I don't, I don't particularly like the GTS to drive it. It's, it's simply too harsh. And then for a sports car, it just it feels big. So, um, you know, this is a, you know, it's a wonderful feeling car with terrific refinement. And I, I think it, it you know, I, I think this is the one to have. I mean. This is the, the purest uh, version of the concept. And I, I think it got kind of polluted a little bit by, you know, everybody trying to, you know, you know, make it faster and faster and faster. It's not slow. It doesn't feel slow. 240 horsepower in European trim, 220 in North American trim. But this car is only 3,200 pounds. You know, as it, as it, uh, as it, uh, as it aged, it also got heavier, and you really, you really feel that. So, um, now this is the this is the 928 that uh, that speaks to me, and you know this is the one that made the massive impact when it came out, like in late '77 as a '78 model year. Um, you know, it was in production to 1995, so by the end of the run, um, uh, it was already kind of long in the tooth, I suppose. Uh, but in this in this era, uh, in this vintage, this was uh, a state-of-the-art car, one European car of the year, and uh, it had a whole bunch of technical firsts, um, you know, from the uh, from the, the, the bumpers, uh, you know, the form-fitting bumpers instead of the you know most every most every other car had the you know kind of ugly bolt-on bumpers in, in that era. Um, Engine was very advanced with uh, you know a, a big girdle, like basically the crank, uh, the crank sandwiched uh, uh, between two big aluminum castings with all the bearings. There's no like you know big end like end caps for the bearings. It's like in a it's in a like I said a large girdle, and that's like a race car practice. I think the uh, Cosworth DFV had that in the Keith Duckworks engine. Uh, but anyway, we're at a twisty road now, so I'll talk, talking, and we can just enjoy the sounds of a 928, and, uh, and let's go for a drive. Also, there's lots of cyclists too, so... Beautiful. It's just beautiful. And there's no vibration. It's, it's, at, it's smooth as silk, this car. It's really lovely. Still not a master in the gearbox yet. So bear with me with that. So, fast enough so that you're having fun and you can you know really enjoy the increase in the revs 
you can use all the power. Um, you know, it's not. And, and with with new cars, you can't do that. You know, they're just stupidly fast. So I can have fun on this road and know that uh, you know, if I'm unlucky, I get a ticket, but I'm not going to go to jail. And I can really savor the refinement of the car and uh, work on the driving and so on, and really get. Uh, really enjoy myself and uh, if, you, if you have a new 800 horsepower hypercar it just goes ba 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 you know it's just silly um, you know this you can you can really feel the road you can dial in the power in uh, nice increments uh, you can you know work on your smoothness you can get a nice flow to it you know try to master the uh, of the car. It's very fluid, so all these bits really work together nicely. Like I said, I, I don't get the same experience in a, in a GTS or an S4 uh, because the car is bigger, uh, the steering effort is more, uh, and uh, there's a lot more tire noise, and the ride is just a lot harsher. And unless you're on billboard smooth you know, freeways, which there aren't any around here, uh, you know, you just get bounced around. This is a rough road, and we're, you know, we're, we're at a, going at a fairly good clip. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very composed inside. Uh, and I'm, I'm not getting... Also, you know, with the, you know, the, the bigger wheels, they tend to hunt a little bit more. Um, and then, so the thing's always fidgeting. You know, some of these cars on this road, I've driven this road a lot, they feel like you just want to pitch you off in a ditch, right? Because um, they're, you know, following the, uh, you know, the camber of the road, the imperfections of the road, and you're really, you're really fighting it. And this isn't like that. This is, uh, it's smooth and refined and fluid and extraordinarily pleasant. Um, some of the, the motoring riders that I really identified with in this era uh, LJK Setright uh, re re really were quite critical of what the 928 had become, and uh, and uh, and wrote uh, you know wrote a lot about how you know this was the best version of that car and deserved to be. I think this is I'm quoting LJK Set right here. Uh, deserved to be the best car in the world in this era. I don't think the 928 GTS was the best car in the world in 1993, but I think this early 928, uh, this is 1981, um, when you compare it to, you know, the XJS and the SLC and so on, it just does so many things so much better than uh, than those cars do. And uh, this, and this particular example, uh, like a mentioned in the video uh, has to be um, one of the best examples next to it. I, I'm sure there's other good early 928s as well. Uh, you know, there might even be some that are, you know, still in their wrappers. But this car, uh, with its low mileage and all of its original finishes and the condition that it's in, uh, it's just a spectacular car. And uh, to think that... Uh, you know, you can drive this and, you know, what it might have been like 40 years ago, you know, to own this car uh, is, uh, you know, I think, I, I think a really, uh, really interesting. And, um, you know, like today, it still feels like a modern car. It's 40 years old and it still feels like a modern car. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's a massively underrated car. Um, you know, everybody wants a 911. But if I'm, if I, if you toss me the keys and I have my choice, and I've had, you know, various 911s and 911 turbos and so on, uh, you know, I'll take this. A 911 turbo's grumpy, uh, basically, in this era, and, uh, you know, lots of work to drive. It's, it's, it's not much fun to commute in a, in a 1980s 911 turbo. I mean, the, 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 the car really works against you. And on that road that I just took, it would be an example of a car that's trying to fling you off the road. Not, not with uh, oversteer, uh, 
at, at the speeds I'm driving, but just because of the suspension is so fidgety. So this is, um, you know, a far more pleasant uh, car to drive, and uh, it's still um, fast enough, you know, like, it's still fast enough. Fast enough to still get yourself in trouble. And, uh, but it's the refinement that really refinement and sportiness together and practicality all in one package which really sets this car apart.